Um, okay, let's see. So, uh, the basic shapes in Go, right, are, of course, the one space jump. Um, yep. And there is also the pillar extension, right? From there, we have the Kosumi diagonal move, yes. And then, Knight's move. Yep. Okay, these ones are the most typical shapes that normally played from a stone. And the farther you get from your stone, the weaker your shape becomes, but also the more, um, how should I say, like geometrical space that your influence is acting upon, right? Like, for example, this uh, extension, the color extension, is the tightest, but it's also like the slowest in terms of how much influence it um, gives, right? Because it's just a single line. From there, uh, the Kosumi um, is the next one. It's a little bit more thin uh, because the stones are not actually connected, so their liberties are not exactly shared uh, until they become connected. But it is slightly faster than the pillar extension, right? Because um, if you imagine a triangle, it's like like the hypotenuse, right? <laughs> Uh, so it should be longer. And then from here, it's the one space jump, right? That one's a little bit thinner. It's weak to the wedge, but um, it's one space um, more influence compared to the pillar extension. And after that, it's a nice move, which um, acts upon a space even farther than the one space jump by a little bit, but also it's more cuttable than any of the previous shapes. And then, from there, the next shape would be the two-space jump, right? That one is even more thin, so we rank it uh, fifth. It's even faster than all the previous ones, but it's also much thinner. It has a variety of weaknesses, right? You can attach in between or play around it and affect the cut. Um, after that, it is the large knight's move. Right? At the rank 6. Um, so that acts on this space, this space, this space, this space, this space. Whoops, I had to leave the one. This one and this one, right? And then, if you want to go even further than that, you have the 3 space jump and the large Ogema. Uh-huh. Hmm. But between the two, actually, this one is stronger than the three space jump. <laughs> Even though the pattern looks like it isn't, right? Um, and the reason why is because when you have that shape, um, you have this covering move, which is a better relationship compared to, say, um, this, which is much harder to connect your two stones. Make sense? Because it's like right in between, so it completely separates them. Right. So that's the ranking of the natural shapes and their thinness and influence, basically. Okay, so as you can see, there are a lot of shapes you normally shouldn't play, like the diagonal jump, right? Or any of these other diagonal looking ones. Um, and then and that space is fine. Mm -hmm. So the typical pattern, yeah, you should not play, um, typically. Because, for example, if you build um, a shape 
that looks like uh, this. Um, for the most part, you should avoid it whenever possible. Because if you look at this relationship, like that, right? Um, they don't have a clearly defined relationship. So there's this, um, a big weakness right here. And it'll completely separate um, those two stones from here to here, right? And if white tries to link up somehow, he's going to get cut no matter like what he does. Um, if you can somehow obtain, like, the whoops, uh, let's click. This box shape, right? Then your shape is nearly perfect uh, because all stones have a good relationship now. But you shouldn't consciously play that shape because you can only move one move at a turn, right? So eventually you're going to have to fix or you expose yourself to this weakness. Which means the shapes you should pick here are maybe here, close to me, right? And it makes a large um, knight shape or Oge die Ogima very large knight um, between these two stones, right? Yeah. Or uh, like that, right? And then all the stone relationships are good. Mm -hmm. So like that you can judge how to make good stone relationships. Okay, make sense? Okay, now we're going to talk about its relationship to another stone. The most severe covering move is generally um, this shoulder hit when you have a nice shape uh, because it's almost as close contact as an attach. Uh, it's like the next level over, right? So it has a very severe follow-up. If by Tanuki, you can play here. And then you gain a large influence and you take a liberty away from that stone. Um, in this shape, um, the diagonal attachments are generally not good um, unless you're like facing a corner or something because um, like I said before this is a tight shape right and this is the next level over it's a little bit looser so between the two uh, because they're in close contact the tight shape is stronger than the looser shape um, black shape has a lot of uh, weak points for example white can play here and threaten to Hani on top, like that, right? And normally that leaves invasion possibilities. Um, next, I can attack on top at the head, like that. And black can't really feasibly cut it um, easily because when white blocks, you see he's very, very short on liberties, right? Like black can't even Hane here because he'll just be Atari. So you have to make this kind of empty triangle looking shape and he'll be extremely inefficient, whereas all the white stones are working efficiently. So that's why this is not a good move, and this is a good response. Because it prevents um, your opponent from getting perfect shape. Meaning normally you don't want to extend here, it's a little bit soft. Because when they Hane here, now black shape is perfect. Okay. That makes sense, right? Now, if you want to be, uh, uh, oh, but also this shape might have a weakness in the push and cut. Um, so, if there's a lot of white stones around, you don't want to play this kind of nice move because you expose yourself to a cut. You should only play it when uh, a possible cut will lead to a fight that's good for you, meaning your opponent cannot cut. It has to be submissive with a response. Right? Um, if they press here, then you just extend, and you're making very nice influence. Um, so that's the tightest play when you make when you want to make influence in this direction. Uh, if you want to make influence towards the... Oh wait, no, there's actually one more thing I have to talk about. There is also um, a secondary cut, which is this cut. It's a jump attachment cut. And it can work usually when you have the ladder or if you're using it as a sacrifice stone. For example, if white if black has to capture that, you could potentially sacrifice like this to make shape. Okay. Mm or if the ladder is good for you, you can run out. So it's another possible cut that you have to be aware of.
there's two ways to cut the knife shape. The pushing cut and then the jump attachment cut. Okay. Um, if you want to build influence towards the bottom, you play this move. Um, it's like a capping move, right? Um, if Y tries to cut this with a diagonal cut, who does the shape favor? Yeah, black. Because like I said, uh, this diagonal shape is much weaker than the pillar shape, right? It has a variety of weaknesses. Uh, and if black goes here, then it's like a double pillar facing this diagonal space. And the white stones become extremely weak in this scenario. So that means this kind of diagonal cut is a very, very bad cut in almost all scenarios. And it's one of the weakest cuts in the game. So you should try to avoid playing that one. Um, if you wish to cut this shape as white, you want to play this shape here. <laughs> yeah, it's a very common cue mistake to cut with that diagonal, but it's actually uh, one of the weakest cuts. You want to cut like this. You see the difference? White is now cutting with a pillar shape. It's much stronger than a diagonal shape. Right? Yes, much tighter. Of course, this one depends on the ladder. If you get captured, um, then you pretty much failed. But if the ladder is good for you, then this cut is fine. And you can do it when you have, um, you know, more influence in a certain area. You should always think about cutting when you have more stones in an area. And you should always think about having shapes that can't be cut when you have less stones in an area. Meaning, when you're attacking, you can play nice moves and things like that, which add more pressure. But when you're defending, you want to play things like one face jumps, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, that's the basic theory of go. Uh, okay. Um, apart from that, we also have um, the Kasumi, right? Which is um, tighter than this move. Like I said, this one's looser, right? This one has basically no chance to cut. So it's a very solid move, very good for defense. Uh, in terms of offense, it's also pretty strong because it creates a Mii of follow up knight moves here and here. Oh. Have they been successful? <laughs> okay. Uh, as long as you're cutting when you have more stones in the area, the fight will usually favor you. If you have less, it's probably an overplay, because you're just creating more groups for yourself in a space where you're not strong. Right. So, for example, you have this follow-up play, right? And this one. So, it's very nice. Um, apart from that, you, you can also do a pillar extension. This shape is the slowest of all moves, but it's also the most solid and makes the strongest shape possible, basically, with a single stone. So you only use this move when you weigh that you want to be very, very solid uh, with almost no IG, and you're okay with a slightly slower move. Uh, it's particular, particularly good in corners. Right? Uh, for example, if you have um, some influence, right, in this direction, uh, like this or something, um, then this solid move is a very good way to protect yourself against the white stone while attacking. And then if they extend, you can follow up with a cap. You see how all these shapes are basically what I talked about? <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's very, very strong. Um, see, it's a little pillar shape combined with a knife move. So this is a very good shape, and it caps the white stone. So that's why uh, these shapes are the foundation of how stone relationships are made. Okay, apart from that, you also have the jump attachment. Um, and when do you play an attachment? Attachments usually lead to close contact sequences where if you get attached, normally Hane is the most severe response because it takes away a liberty, right? And they already had one liberty left from attaching to you. So normally they have to extend, and then you can extend. And black will probably have to play some sort of protecting move, and then white will probably play a protecting move too. So attachments build influence in a certain direction, and they're good for defense. 
they're not good for offense because it strengthens both sides. So you don't want to attach the weak stone because it just helps them settle. Right? Like, for example, let's imagine white played the same series of moves, but black um, is not touching white. First, black goes here, and white, instead of playing a Hana, he just plays an empty Kasumi, right? Then, black and press, that's very strong against the shape. Remember? Uh, like I said, this shape always favors the pillar. And then, the white plays this move, right? He's extending, but... Um, Black is just going to say block it like that. And then white comes back to play this. And then black can do something like that. So white made the exact same shape as before. But all the black stones are now more efficient. This is why when we attack, we don't touch stones. Because touching stones just helps them. Because when you touch their stone, their stone is touching you back, which is weakening your stone and demands a response. When you play slightly farther away, their stones don't affect you as much, which means your attacking stones are stronger this way. Does that make sense? So, yes, when attacking, um, do not play close contact moves. Um, unless, unless you seal them in. For example, if you have this kind of shape already, then no, you don't want to be loose, because um, they'll escape, right? You want to be tight. In this case, your stone relationship will allow you to play an attachment move because your stones are preventing your opponent from making the ideal shape. So he, he's not, we're not going to play the same Hane and Extend now, right? We're going to play a cut in this scenario. Um, yes, that is true. If you're defending your Moyo, you're attacking your opponent who is inside it. And if you're inside, you'll be defending your group. Mm -hmm. The attacker is always the one who's threatening to capture, and the defender is the one who's always trying to make life. Okay, so this is when attachments are good attacks, right? Uh, for example, this shape, the attachment is also good, because once again, if you place the same, like, sort of Hane move, you're not going to respond by going there. You're going to play an Atari. Right? Mm hmm And you, the opponent is still sealed in. Okay. So, other than that, uh, we can talk about this relationship. Um, of all the moves, this bump is probably the worst. And the move you really want to avoid playing. Because from a uh, Tewari analysis, have you ever heard that term? Okay, yeah, it's spelled like this. And the analysis says that, um, yes, you change move order to see if uh, moves make sense. Now, if you look at, say, a contact move, right, your normal response is going to be either the Hane, take a liberty, or you extend and you make this solid shape, right, and extend your own liberty. You're not going to play here on the other side, right? That's like illogical. Because, uh, <laughs> who shaped it in favor? Obviously white. Okay, um, so that means you normally don't want to play this bump if you can help it. However, it is a useful move in certain situations. For example, um, if there's a white stone on either side, right? Uh, if you play this kind of jump move, it's a little bit thin, like I said, it's not severely connected. Uh, white can attach on the outside like this, and if you try to separate them, he'll separate you back, basically. Just like that. Right? And it'll cut right through your um, one space jump. If you play a kind of pillar extension, this will um, definitely split them, but as I said, it has like the least effect because your stones are so close together. So white can just dodge on like either side. Uh, if they play uh, Kasumi, right, um, they still sort of have a weak shape when your opponent blocks like this. So this is a kind of scenario where the bump becomes a playable option. Because after you exchange it like that, and then you jump, 
they no longer have um, this move like before because you'll just uh, split it like that. And they can't ignore the bump either because if they ignored it, then you get a Hane and that'll crush the stone. So the bump is generally a move used when you want to prevent some sort of attachment on your stone, right? If you want to prevent like some sort of attachment like that. Because once you make that exchange, they no longer have that move. They can try to attach all they want, but now you can break their shape. Make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Um, apart from that, the bump is also another move you sometimes use when you want to make a Mii of Hane on either side. If a Hane on either side will lead to a favorable result, you can do this. For example, if they go here, then you Hane here, right? And you build that way. And if they go here, then you Hane here and build this way. Uh, this is a playable option sometimes. Um, I can give an example. Like, for example, when you're in uh, in this corner, right? Um, this pump is actually a Joseki move. <laughs> Although, uh, it's kind of old fashioned. Uh, if they go down, you build the right side like that. Um, if I go this way, then you take the corner. Yeah, um, it's an old fashioned move. Not many people like it because the bump is not really a good move in general. But uh, it's it's sometimes playable. It's a shape. Okay, apart from the bump, we have the Kosumi, right? Dagma move. Normally white will block because as I said, it favors uh, the color shape. But you can create a follow-up Hane in a lot of situations. Um, of course you expose yourself to a cutting point, right? And remember, this fight favors two. The white or black stone in this formation, whose shape is stronger? Yes, because, um, yes, the pillar shape um, has more liberties. Um, however, it is a possible way to play um, when you have more stones in the area because your backup stones are going to help you with the fight. Also, if you have an extra move, then um, you can the fight will favor Black because he's one step ahead. So even though his shape's slightly weaker, but because he has the extra move, um, it's severe. So you have this weakness, but you can use it to cover your opponent when you have more stones in an area. So if I were to give you an example, let's say Black has this corner, oops, Black has this corner enclosure, right? And then he has an extension here too, and White decides to go inside. Well, like I said, you don't want to attach to stones to attack them, right? Because it's very, very easy for your opponent to escape. So, um, you don't want to be loose either, because they'll escape like that. Um, Kema is slightly better, um, but White can play a very, very crude sequence and still find his way out, basically. Uh, actually, that doesn't look very good in this situation, but it's, something, it's somewhat possible. Um, in this case, this is the tightest move. And when they play up, then you play the Hane. And they can't feasibly cut you here, because there's simply um, not enough stones to help them in this fight. Right? So white is captured. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you play here, uh, you can play a follow-up one here. And white is in trouble. Although there's kind of a testuji in this situation that white can sort of exploit, which is like this. You push and cut. And then when black tries to capture your stone, um, perhaps like this. Uh, then you jump out here. <laughs> and it's difficult for black to capture white. Because yes, it's Atari. Mm -hmm. 
So there's sort of a decision like that. Um, but does it mean that white is okay? Because black can still do things like play this cap, and the white shape is very, very weak. Okay. So anyway, this close meaning is the tightest response in this scenario. Okay. Tighter than this. Tighter than that. Tighter than that, right? The farther away you go, the looser you become. Mm-hmm. And that's too tight. <laughs> Doesn't help. <laughs> and this one, yes. Too slow. <laughs> so always choose your shape according to the situation. As long as you're aware of the advantages and disadvantages of all of them. Now, hmm. Okay, let's see. Okay, apart from that, um, your other shapes are a kema, right? If you want to build in this direction, um, it it goes one line farther than say the one stitch jump. Um, but like I said, the farther you go, the looser you are, right? And you have to be aware that you might be cut. So it's something to take note of. Um, this large night cap, yes, is even farther and looser, um, but it acts with an even greater influence than the ones from before. Now, there's many ways to cut this for white. For example, the normal attachment, right? And black shape is actually a little bit weaker than before when compared to the knight's move. Because, um, this stone here is no longer connected. If it was there, it would be connected. But that's not to say this is a bad shape for black. It's still a very findable shape. For example, like this. Um, you can push here, and it becomes a honey at the head of two stones, right? But at the same time, white is also the honey at the head of two stones. So both uh, shapes are low liberty, but it's my favorite black because you have that one extra stone, right? At L13, yes. Mm -hmm. Which means white is a step behind in this fight. So even though both shapes are tight on liberty, they favor black because he has more stones. However, if white has more stones in the area, then you have to be careful. Like for example, if he has a stone here, you probably have to respond to this move. Otherwise, this cut is going to become severe. Right? So for example, black might need to fix like this. Um. You have to be aware of those kind of forcing moves. Apart from that, white has another kind of cut that might look like this. Um, but like I said, this shape is not a good fighting shape for white because um, this shape is weak compared to the pillar shape, as you can recall, right? Black can just play here, and then the liberties are ex ex exposed immediately. If white no be then cut, Nobi and then cut. Mm, which Nobi? K12 first. Oh, here? Oh, okay, yes. Uh, this is a possible cut too. But as you can see, um, black is one step ahead, right? <laughs> so you can only play this kind of cut when you have more stones on the outside. Like, stones have to be somewhere to balance out black's extra stone, right? Like, so for example, um, maybe if you have a stone here, yeah, you can totally do that. Right? <laughs> now this is a feasible fight for a white. Okay, um, however, just because you play this move doesn't mean black can let you cut him like that. Because remember what I said? This diagonal shape is not a good shape in general. Black can play here. And now, white is in a little bit of a predicament. If he plays here to cut black, black will play here to cut white. And it's not clear who this favors. It's basically just an exchange. Uh, it'll favor whoever's wall favors them globally on the board. So the diagonal move is played with care, even if it's for like a cut or something. Make sense? Uh, if you go here, there's really no different way that black can respond to this stone. He has to basically cut like this. Uh, if black falls back like that, right? 
Then you see, once again, this is a diagonal relationship. So how does I punish this? Anyone? <laughs> you go in between, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. And then when they bump, you play the jump. And it makes this table shape. Now the stone here has been completely isolated, right? And white shape is for the most part sort of connected. If black plays here, you go here. And black has a very bad relationship with stone. Whereas white is all connected. If black goes here, then you connect here. And it damages the L13 stone even more. Now, yes, black can split this one stone. Um, white should normally block when your opponent pushes through your shape like this. You normally uh, fall back only in certain scenarios, but uh, it'll make your stone here completely useless. So if you can, normally you should block. Um, even though you leave cutting points, but it's still difficult for your um, opponent because for example, like this, right? He still has to worry about his own liberties. So that's something to be aware of. If you're going to get um, pushed through, like um, this one space jump formation, here and here, for the most part, you should block whenever possible. Unless, of course, like, your opponent has so many stones around, you simply just can't get cut. Okay. So that tells you a little bit about um, this Ogema, right? Um, I would say that's about the limit of how you can respond to the stone. Um, other than just attachment, like I said, attachments strengthen both sides, right? You can only play this if you want to strengthen yourself, and they'll return to a normal variation, most likely. Um, in some scenarios, you can also pull back. Uh, this is more solid than extending because it doesn't leave a cutting point, right? If it's like this, it leaves a cutting point. However, for the most part, it's difficult for a white to play this cut immediately because his own liberties are tight. And black is a move ahead. But it is a weakness to be aware of. If he gets one extra stone anywhere, he can make this cut probably. So if you want to be more solid, you can go here. Right? And then white has um, three uh, a few responses. One is he can extend here, which gives a uh, very good influence in that direction, but leaves him exposed to this cut. He can either play a sacrifice to continue building influence, or he can fight, right? And they just defend two more stones in the area. He can also play something like a tiger's mouth, right? And then this is kind of a normal sort of shape that might appear. Black makes influence that way, white makes influence in the other direction. Um, it sort of leaves a weakness here, though, that black can use to build influence in this direction. Uh, if that move is problematic, a simple connection would be better. But like I said, tight moves are more solid, but they're more slow. This one is faster acting, it goes one space further. So you always have to weigh the pluses and minuses. Do you want to be faster or do you want to be more solid? Make sense? Because see, obviously, black doesn't have this move anymore. Um, he can just get cut like that, or even cut like this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Never know how to choose. Um, normally, if you're stronger in the area, you can play looser and faster. If you're weaker in the area, you should be more solid. Maybe, maybe. Mm, you also don't want to be heavy. So normally, you choose a solid response when you want to deny your opponent's centaves. And you play the faster response when you want to affect the, the board more globally. Mm -hmm. uh, in an area with no stones, in an area with no stones, um, stones have to appear first before a stone relationship can occur, right? For example, uh, a stone has to appear there. And then maybe another stone will appear there. And now we can start talking about how to uh, respond, right? What kind of um, play we want to choose. And if there's no stones in the area, then um, normally you just kind of third or fourth line. Third line for territory. 
uh, fourth line for influence. Right? Okay. Um, from a two space jump perspective, there's a few maneuvers. Um, because your opponent's zone is so far away, you don't want to play tight like this. It's going to have no effect on the stone, right? You don't want to play tight when they're far away. If they're far away, you want to play far. For example, like this. Because they're so far away, it's hard for them to exploit the cut. Like, how's he going to cut you in this situation? Like this? <laughs> this stone relationship is even worse than the Kusumi. So this sort of cut is normally not feasible. Yeah. Uh, it's just simply too weak. So, if your opponent is far from your stone, you can play looser and faster. If your opponent is tighter to your stone, like here, you want to be a little bit tighter too. Like normally, uh, this move is a little bit far for against this one stage jump, because you can play this cut. If he's farther away, then you can be farther. If he's extremely close, then yes, you don't want to be far, because you'll just be cut, right? You want to play close contact when they play cl when they play close contact. If they're medium distance, you play medium, right? Like that. And if they're far, then you play far. Okay. Um. Huh. Hey, Sagase. How is it going? All right. Now, in terms of touching stones, if you are playing defense, um. Okay, if you're playing defense, this shoulder hit is a good move. Your opponent will normally stand against it because they don't want to be pressed, right? They don't want to ignore a shoulder hit. So they'll play in probably this direction, and then you extend, and you can build influence towards the top. Um, as you can see, this stone relationship is not as efficient compared to a black stone there. Do you guys agree? Because in this shape, and you have the next black move, you're not going to play here, right? You're going to you're going to play um, the knight's move. It's tighter, right? Um, so that's a little bit of the weakness of being farther away from your opponent is that uh, your shapes might not be the most efficient. But uh, depending on the situation, right? If this influence is very valuable towards that like top left direction, it's a good play. Because once the stone is on the board, you can't move it. You can only make like the best shape that you can make with it. <laughs> Does that make sense? Mm hmm So here's another example. Um when black places attachment Sometimes white might not want to Hane, he might want to just pull back um, to try to take Sente. Because if black Tanuki's now, then white can cut the stone off. So black normally uh, does not really want to pull back because if you do a Tewari analysis, um, that stone should have been here, right? Making this shape. If you had the next play, you would play L3 to take a liberty and be more solid, not just coast me here. Which means it's actually more severe for black to play this bump here because it takes away a white liberty. But then, if you think about it, this stone is not exactly in the most logical place because if you were to move it to be more efficient, you would probably move it up, right? Or move it to be um, a connection, right? However, your stone is on the board already. There's nothing you can do about it. So that means you should play the most severe move that you can given this moment which is this move, because it takes the liberty away. It's harder for your opponent to react. If he tenukis, you follow up with a press, right? And it's difficult for your opponent to resist when their liberties are tight. They can't feasibly counterattack because they simply don't have enough stones in the area and they'll be easily cut. So when you outnumber your opponent, normally they have to play um, more submissive, right? That's how you take advantage. P3. Um, yes, yes, P3 is a shape. 
Uh, of course, one space jump is less solid than this one, right? It's faster, but you leave a weakness. So you always have to choose, do you want to be fast or do you want to be solid? So when your stone is already on the board, make the best that you can with it. Um, otherwise, yeah, choose the best shape possible. Okay, I think that basically wraps up like 90% of what kind of stone relationships you'll see in the game. Uh, does anyone have any questions? <laughs> you want to cut? <laughs> Oh, you want to learn how to cut a uh, two-phase jump? Is that your question? So to cut a two-phase jump, um, normally you guys can see that you can go either here or here, right? So it just depends um, which stone is like more valuable. Normally you just attach one side. Your opponent has to choose a Hane, right? If they extend, then you just extend with them and they're basically cut. Although it's not like a great cut because, you know, your shape is kind of weak. But when you have a lot of stones in the area, it's feasible. Like for example, here, and then you extend to have more liberties. Um, so normally you extend other way first, uh, like this. Um, it's possible as well, but this turn is usually a very, very good shape, right? You can't really say this fight favors white. Well, now there's shapes will actually favor white that much, but um, in this one in particular, I feel it's a little bit weaker than this one. Because it doesn't sever the connection between the two stones as strongly. Um, okay, but normally black is not going to extend. He's going to play a Hane, either above or below. And your best move is not to bump, because it'll be very, very tight on liberties, right? I mean, how can you um, attack when you yourself are about to die? You want to play a double honey. That's the key move. <laughs> oh, okay. That's what you want to avoid. Um, do not make shapes that are very low on liberties. You want to expand your liberties as much as possible. Because it takes more moves to attack you, which means more moves for you to play to attack them. And then you extend. And sometimes this will depend on the ladder. But sometimes it doesn't, because even if they have a ladder, you can cut the other side, right? For example, like this. Or extend if you don't have a ladder. Um, and then they play like that, then you can continue to cut with a move kind of like this. Even though it makes a bad shape, but normally you don't have a kind of choice in this situation. Um, by pressing there, it creates a cutting point for you to expose later at 010. So when you have more stones in a general area, you can cut through the two-stage jump like that. Attach, and then double honey. If the Atari is here to try to connect, it doesn't matter. They have so many cutting points. Uh, normally, you cut the widest side, which is here. You split it into a group of four and, oh no, three and two. Um, but of course, this shape depends on the ladder, right? So uh, make sure you have a ladder. Uh, if you cut here, it's very easy for Black to just sacrifice that stone. You can Atari here, Atari here, and then just like connect. And then it doesn't look like White even gained that much. Right? You still probably have to eat that stone somehow. So when you cut, cut the wider side. Cut your opponent into bigger pieces. Does that make sense? Like again, this is not the wider side, right? It's a side that's easily sacrificed. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. And then you think, oh, I'll cut this side. But again, easily sacrificed. <laughs> so, yeah. Make sure you cut wider sides. Okay. That's how you cut the piece big jump. Okay, any last questions? Ah, yes, no problem. I hope that was useful. Alright, I'm going to end it here then. Cheers.